Hello everyone and welcome back to Weekend Cartoon Reviews. If this one ends up being a little bit short, don't be surprised. It's mostly because, well, it's not really much to unpack here, to be completely honest with you. There really isn't much to unpack with this movie. So anyway, let's just get into it. We're reviewing the new DreamWorks movie, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. Now, DreamWorks, let me ask you this. How do you go? From the bad guys, to Puss in Boots 2, to this. Yeah, I know, someone already made this joke in a review, but I thought it was too funny, so... And I, you know, have the same question. How do you go from this to this to this? Oh, that's just my question to you, DreamWorks, so... <clears throat> anyway, what's Ruby Gilman Teenage Crack it about? Well, I'm gonna be real. I predicted this story going into it right away. I knew how it was going to play out because the trailer revealed way, way too much. But enough on that. Let's just go into what it's about. So Ruby is a teenager who, um, yeah, she goes to school. She, like, she wants to go in the ocean, but her parents keep telling her no, like, so she can't go to prom because it's going to be on the ocean. And, yeah, like, basically, but then she meets this guy, like, her friends tell her to rebel, against, to rebel against her parents to go to prom, and so she sees this guy who, um, she tutors in algebra, I forget his name, I forget the love interest name, I think it was, like, Connor or something, but, yeah, like, he tutors her, and, well, I guess you can say that... Yep, the two love each other and are trying to do a good prom posal for prom. That's how the movie starts. And I like the beginning of the movie. The movie at the beginning's pretty good. But of course, we learn throughout the movie that, like, basically he drowns. He goes into the water and, oh no, Ruby's not allowed to go into the water. What do we do? So Ruby goes into the water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obvious. And you're just kind of waiting for the moment where, like, her mom comes in and realizes she went into the water and... Okay, so for context, Ruby is a kraken. I think that's obvious by the title. She's a kraken who um, has to live amongst the humans. And so... Ruby... Yeah. She turns into a kraken. How'd you guess? And then there's this mermaid named Chelsea who comes in. And I mean, she's a nut. All right, character. I mean, the characters are good in this movie. The movie does one thing right in the characters. And there was this pirate dude who made me laugh at times throughout the movie. Who um, is wanting to convince the world that the Kraken is real. That Krakens are real. And, um, okay, so. The movie has a good concept. I'll give it that. The movie's got a good concept, but it's a case of it being executed poorly. What do I mean by this? So basically... The movie is kind of reversed. Because, like, you expect the Krakens to be this... The big bad ones, usually, in movies. And mermaids are the good ones. I find it fucking hilarious that this came out during the live-action Little Mermaid. Now I'm gonna be real. I, I, this is probably a controversial take. But the live-action Little Mermaid is better than this. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not even joking on that. Anyway... So Chelsea lies and claims that she was the one that saved him from drowning instead of Ruby. And guess what? The two then become friends, but Chelsea's just manipulating Ruby on to get some trident that her mother, that Chelsea's mother had when she was ruling the seas as a kraken. Because we also learn the reason why Ruby and her family moved to the land is because the ocean was unsafe for them or something like that. And then, you know... Ruby's, she meet, Ruby meets her grandma that she didn't know she had, and she teaches her all these abilities. Yeah, you, you figure out how this movie's gonna play out. And then we realize Chelsea's been leading Ruby on this whole time and manipulating her into getting the trident, which, I mean, okay, there's no stakes here. I'm gonna be real, there's, like, no stakes here. And here's why there's really no stakes here. It's because they already revealed in the trailer, like, the final battle, like, the big climax of the movie. They already revealed the climax of the movie in the trailer, which doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm gonna be real, I probably would have predicted Chelsea as the villain of the movie, even 
after the fact. Even though there's already a dude who's technically an antagonist, the guy who wants to get the Kraken, but he apologizes by the end of the movie. So, yeah, this does not work on so many levels. Here's why. Well, not so many, but more so two levels this doesn't work. Here's why this twist doesn't work. One, they revealed it in the trailer already. And two, it's quite obvious with the context that mermaids are bad. The movie already gives us the context that mermaids are bad. And it's already revealed that Chelsea is a mermaid. And it's also revealed that she's the daughter of the said queen. So it's too obvious. And yeah. Like, even so, without that factor, I would have went in thinking Chelsea was the villain. Even if... They didn't show the trailer. I probably would have guessed that Chelsea was going to be the villain. Just by, like, her introduction scene alone. I don't know if she was supposed to be a twist villain. if Or if DreamWorks was just making her out to be an asshole and then just become a villain. Like, I don't know what DreamWorks was going for here. But let me tell you, it just did not work. At all, in my opinion. I think it would be better if they established Chelsea as the villain. And then the audience waits to realize, yeah, Ruby, get away from her. Now, I'm going to be real again. The characters were a solid part of the movie. And the animation was pretty solid, too. Those two aspects are pretty good. Like, I judge movies based off of characters, story, and animation, mostly. And there's other side factors, too, like comedy and drama and music. And, I mean, complaining about pop songs and animated movies is just like beating a dead horse at this point. So I'm not even going to bother complaining about that. The animation did some creative things. There was some very creative stuff done with the animation, and I like that. I like that a lot. And the characters are very likable. Like, in the beginning, I sort of related to Ruby, the beginning of the movie. So maybe I should have liked this movie more, but I feel like... I maybe would have liked it more if the trailer didn't reveal everything all at once. And maybe people who don't watch the trailer going in, like, if you haven't... Like, I mean, would I go out and see this in a theater? No. I definitely would not say go out and go watch this in a theater. It's definitely not one of DreamWorks' best movies. It's definitely just their most okay movie. It's their most mid-movie they've ever made, in my opinion. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. But in fact, it's tracking to open on DreamWorks. It's tracking to be one of DreamWorks' worst openings of all time. And that goes from a fault of the fact that they started marketing this movie three months before the release date. Yeah. There's, like I said, there's not much to unpack here. It's a typical animated movie. Like, you're gonna figure out how the story's gonna go beat by beat as you're watching it. But it's not like it's annoyingly predictable. I mean,. There were some things that actively annoyed me throughout the movie, but I've already mentioned that, like, especially how they did Chelsea's character. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Bye, everyone.